Hello everyone, I am back with part 3 of our inventory tutorial for Rimpy. This is going to be the last part of this one for a little while. When we get done with this, we're going to have our inventory system pretty much completely functional. Of course, there are always ways that we can extend it, and I am going to look into doing that in the future, but I'm ready to move on and try something new. We'll revisit this later and flesh some things out a little bit. So if there's anything specific that you want to see from this, of course, feel free to leave me a comment below, and I'll look into doing that when I continue this series in the future. But for now, uh, let's go ahead and jump right in. So where we left off last time is we had our uh, inventory system uh, pretty functional uh, to where we went to our inventory screen and it would display all of our inventory items on the on our inventory screen. Um, the problem that we ran into it is that it was a little bit tough to read because we had this white font against our parchment paper background and it just didn't stand out really well. So the first thing that we're going to do is work on making that text stand out a little bit. And we're gonna we're gonna uh, we're gonna achieve that by using a custom styles. So everything that you see in the game, from the sliders to the menus to the boxes, everything has a style applied to it, and all of those styles can be tweaked or changed entirely. You can add to them, take things away, or just scrap them and, and start all over again and do your own thing. So uh, I would like to explore that in the near future. Um, however, for now, we're just going to work on, uh, we're gonna work on kind of taking uh, some styles and just adding to them and changing a couple of things. All right, so let's go ahead and jump in and start working with our code. So right now, I've got my screens.rpy file opened, uh, which we've looked at a couple of times. And normally, we've been looking at the, well, the screens. Uh, we talked about those a bit in screen language. But there's this section at the top called styles. And there are all of these default styles. And this is um, like your text styles. Uh, here's your input file, uh, style rather, hyperlink text, GUI text. Like all of these are what define what the different elements, uh, the GUI elements or GUI elements of the game look like. And this is where we're going to start tweaking things a little bit. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create an extra heading up here um, called uh, custom styles. You'll also notice there is a heading called default styles. And um, I actually forgot to delete that before I started this. I created the default styles heading. You will not see that in your screens.rpy file. It'll look like that it'll just have like all of your styles under the styles heading but i like to separate my custom styles from my default styles just so i know that if something gets screwed up it's probably something that i did and i need to check out my uh, custom styles all right so we're going to create an entirely new style here and we're going to call it inventory text of course you could call this anything you want but we're going to call it that so i'm going to say style inventory text is gui text and then we got a block under that. So basically, um, if you're uh, familiar with uh, object-oriented programming and the concept of inheritance, this is similar to that, not technically the same thing, but this new style is going to inherit from GUI text. So basically, everything that GUI text does and looks like, our text is going to do and look like, except for the things that we change. So that way we don't have to put in everything that defines GUI text. We can just put in the things that we want it, want to be different about it. And uh, we are going to change the size and we're gonna change this to 50. And I think that's 50 pixels. Don't quote me on that, but I think that's what that is. And uh, right now our text is white by default. So we're going to change that to black. And the way that we do that is color. And then we're gonna put in a hexadecimal value um, in quotation marks. Um, so I'm going to do, we're going to put in a hash symbol and I'm just going to put 000, 000, 000, which is black. Um, one of the cool things about uh, VS Code is that whenever you put in colors, it'll give you this color box. And if you hover over that, you can select a new color using this color picker and it will automatically update to the correct hex value. Really, really cool. But like I said, for now, we're just going to go all black on that one. All right, so size 50, color black, and then we're going to do our font. And I've already got a font in here, um, and you will want to make sure that your font is in a correct location. When we did the um, the interface tutorial before, the menu tutorial, I don't believe I put the font in the place that I normally do. Um, so normally I create a folder inside the GUI folder. So it would be game folder, GUI, 
fonts, and that's where I put all of my fonts. And I tried to do the same font that we used um, for the Photoshop file. Unfortunately, that font is one of the included fonts in Photoshop, and it's a weird format that RemPy doesn't recognize. I think it was .txf or something like that. And I typically use .ttf because um, I know that's a true type font, and I know that, um, that RemPy will recognize that. So I am having to use a different font, which I'm generally okay with. Um, if I were actually going to release this game, I would probably find a way to convert it or go back and change that font so it's a little bit more cohesive. But for the purpose of this, of this tutorial, I'm perfectly happy leaving it as something else. Um, so I'm going to use a font, one of my favorite ones uh, for uh, handwritten stuff. It's called bad, badhandwriting.ttf. There we go. So if I were to go into my game right now, it would look exactly how it did before because we aren't doing anything with this new with this new style. We've created it, but we're not actually calling it yet. Um, so I'm going to go back to my custom screens. All right, so now I'm back in my custom screens, and the way that we apply this uh, style is super super easy. All we have to do is go down to where our where we put in our text before. Um, so we did that in the last tutorial, and I'm just going to put in after that style, and then in quotation marks, inventory text. So now, whenever it displays these inventory items, it's going to do it with that style that we just created. So let's go ahead and pull that game up, and we'll check out what that looks like so far. We go to start, and of course, we got nothing in our inventory from the beginning. But if we pick up the keys, and we go in there, oh, and we still don't have anything. Oh, there we go, there we go. I just hit that a little bit too early. All right, so now we've got door key, try using it in a door, chest key, try using it in a door, but we have our custom style applied. So we've got the uh, new font, bad handwriting, and uh, also the new color. So that was about all that I had intended on doing with this one. However, I'm going to do an extra part. Um, I got a comment uh, a couple, um, yesterday, I think, um, from uh, someone that wanted to know how you actually use one of these items, like how you can kind of put it into practice. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that really quick. And we actually already have that uh, functionality built in. We just have to use it. Um, so you have to think about this in game terms, because in game terms, we're, or in programming terms rather, we aren't going to use the item. We've got to figure out what we want to do with it in programming. So the way that we're going to do it is we're going to give the character an opportunity to open a door. And when they try to open that door, we're going to check to see if the correct key is in their inventory. If it is, then the door will open. And if it isn't, the door will not open. So that's how we're actually going to use the item. So um, let me go ahead and get rid of all this real quick. Um, so I'm back in our uh, in our script RPY now, and I'm just going to go ahead and put in a quick background. So I've got all of our inventory and all of our inventory items already created. I'm just going to create a uh, show BG lights with dissolve. Show Lana neutral with the dissolve and then I'm just going to create a really simple menu I'm going to go ahead and create this with a label so we can jump back to it I'm basically just going to create an infinite loop just so I can kind of show you all of these menu items without having to reload everything dozens of times um, all right so we're going to create a menu and we're going to give four options we're going to say open door and for now we're just going to pass on all of these um, open chest because we have a door key and a chest key. Pick up door key. Pass. And pick up chest key. Pass. And then we've got to figure out our logic for each one of these. So, um, First thing we're going to do is give the uh, uh, player an option to open the door. Um, so we're going to check to see if the key is in the inventory. If it is, they will be able to open the door. If the key is not in the inventory, then they won't be able to open the door. So we'll say if door key is in, or just the keyword in, inventory.items, we're going to say you open the door, else... you don't have the correct key to open this door. Same thing for the chest. We're going to check to see if it's in the uh, the chest key is in the inventory. Oops. 
You opened the chest. Else. You don't have the correct key. All right, we're gonna do something extra with these. We're only going to give them the option to pick up the keys if they haven't already picked them up, because otherwise, how, how would they pick it up? It's already been picked up, so we're not even gonna give them the option. So we're going to say, pick up door key if door key not in inventory.items. So that means that before we get to this menu option, it's going to check to see if we have the door key. And if we do, it's not even going to give us the option to pick it up because we've already picked it up. There's no point. Um, but if it has not been picked up, we are going to get the option. And if we choose that, it's going to say you pick up the door key. And then we're going to add it to the inventory. And then same thing for pick up the chest key. We're going to say pick up chest key if chest key not in inventory.items. I just noticed a typo up here. That would have caused me a headache in a few minutes. There we go. You pick up the chest key inventory.addItem. Uh, chest key. Here we go. All right, and let's check that out and see how we did. All right, so far so good. Still good. So if we try to open the door, you don't have the correct key. And, oh, it kicked us right back out because I forgot to jump. Uh, oops. Forgot to jump back to our start menu. Just the headache I was trying to save us from. All right, let's try that again. There we go. You don't have the correct key to open this chest, nor to open the door. But if I pick up, let's do the chest key. So now it doesn't even give us the option. Still won't let me open the door, but it will let me open the chest. Same thing if I pick up the door key. I can now open the chest and the door. So right now I'm doing this with a very simple menu system just for illustrative purposes, just to show you how it's done. If you're doing this in your own games, there are a whole host of other things that you could do with this. Um, what I would probably do is create an image map where you actually click on the door or click on a chest in the scene to open it. Um, then you can have a different background image with the open door so you can actually see it open. You can even create an animation where you can see the door or the chest opening. Uh, maybe when the chest is open, you can click on it again to look through it to find items or things like that. So again, there is lots and lots and lots of stuff that you can do with this. However, uh, that's where we're going, we're going to uh, stop for right now. Um, as always, if you learned something or if you got something out of this video, please be sure to hit the like button. Um, that really helps me out in the algorithm and helps my videos get seen by as many people as possible. Um, also, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't yet. I'm trying to hit 2,000 subscribers. I'm a little more than 300... Uh, 300 away uh, towards reaching that, but I think we can do it pretty soon. Um, leave me a comment below um, if you have any questions or if you like this or if you want to see me cover anything else in particular. Um, I do have my next several videos planned out already, so um, those will be coming very soon. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.